Hi, I'm Stacey Coprentz. I'm a GMAT and EA instructor with Manhattan Prep, and we are here to talk about the GMAT online, and in particular, the whiteboards. I'm sure you've heard that we're finally allowed to use a physical whiteboard. Here's the really interesting thing. We get both. We still get to keep the online whiteboard, and that's awesome because there are actually really good reasons for using both the physical whiteboard and the online one. The key is knowing when to use which, and that's exactly what we're going to talk about right now. So first, let's just take a look at how the online whiteboard works. So here's what it looks like, except for the big MPREP logo at the top. You're going to see a bunch of tools along the left hand side here. And then as you click on the different tools, you'll see this little bar change in terms of the features you're allowed to use. So for the pen tool, which is this very first one right here, it's just a freeform pen tool. You can set how thick you make the line, and this one's best to set at one of the first two thicknesses. You can also erase stuff, except this is really annoying. It's going to take me forever to erase what I just did. So for this, well, this one, I'm going to set it to the thickest of the available thicknesses so that I can erase really quickly. And the neat thing is that the tool will actually remember what you've chosen. So when I go back here, it's still set at the smallest thickness, and over here, it's still set at the biggest one. There's also a straight line tool. You can make it dotted. You can make it an arrow. I didn't use those on the exam. There are shapes, but chances are you're going to use your physical whiteboard to do geometry and math on the exam. So you probably won't use those too much. There's also a text tool, super useful for taking notes. The annoying thing about the text tool is that it does not remember the font size. So if I change the font size to like 64, Ah, oh, really big notes. And I go to one of the other tools and I come back, it's going to be set back at 18 again. So I recommend that when you're setting up your whiteboard at the beginning, you zoom in or zoom out to a size that's comfortable for you to use the 18 point font specifically, so that throughout the exam, you don't have to worry about continually changing the font size. I'll show you in a minute how to zoom. Um, oh, and one more thing. Uh, as I've been doing all of this, I have been using my finger on my trackpad for the drawing stuff. You can also, oops, you can also use a mouse. Uh, you cannot use a like a stylus with a bamboo tablet or a stylus or your finger on a touch screen computer simply because a lot of people don't have access to that kind of technology and the test makers are properly trying to make sure that the playing field is pretty level for all of us finger on the trackpad or a mouse to do all of this. Uh, the next two tools over here I, I didn't use. This is a polygon tool. This is the eyedropper. Ignore them. This tool, though, is very useful. This is a pan tool. So it basically lets you move around on the screen and basically move what you've done off screen to give yourself some more new white space. As far as I've been able to tell, this whiteboard is infinite. It just goes forever in all directions. And so you just, you always have more space to do whatever it is that you need to do. You just pan over to give yourself that space. The next few tools down here are around color. I didn't really use these on the exam. These two down here are super useful. This is undo and redo basically. So if I didn't like that line that I just drew, I can get rid of it. Or oops, I deleted it by accident and I want to bring it back. So undo and redo, very useful. These next two are the zoom in and zoom out tools. So I, at the beginning, again, I'm just going to zoom until the 18 point font is at a comfortable level. And then I'm pretty much going to leave this for the rest of the exam. And the final thing down here is to clear. I can get rid of everything that I've done on the entire whiteboard. If I do that by accident, I can also get it back by undoing. Chances are that you're not actually going to clear ever during the exam. And here's why. Um, and this really starts to get into the when we would use the physical whiteboard versus when we would use the online one. So the physical whiteboard is limited. It's a maximum of 12 by 20 inches or 30 by 50 centimeters. It's not a ton of space. So we're going to be constantly using and erasing the physical whiteboard. For stuff then that we want to keep for the entire exam or at least an entire section of the exam, the physical whiteboard is not the best place to put it. The best place for that is the online whiteboard for two reasons. One is, like I said, it's infinite. You can put as much there as you want and there's always more space. And two is that for the online whiteboard, it's whatever you put on it is just always there. Even if you close the whiteboard and open it back up again, it'll still be there when you go from one section of the exam to the next section. Everything that you put will still be there. It's just persistent the entire time. So online whiteboard is for stuff that you want to type or stuff that you want to keep for an entire section or for the entire exam. And the physical whiteboard is for stuff like math that would be more annoying to do on the online whiteboard.
So let's take a look at how we're going to use the online whiteboard specifically to do something super important for the exam, which is to keep track of our time, our time management throughout each of the three sections, quant, verbal, and integrated reasoning. So let's start with the first section of the exam which is quant. If you are already using our yellow pad time management strategy to keep track of your time for a testing center exam, we're actually going to do something similar here. So we're just adapting that for use in the online whiteboard. And here's the cool thing. It's actually easier and faster to set it up in the online whiteboard than it is to do it on the yellow pad in the testing center. So grab the uh, drawing tool. And you're basically going to just draw a series of crosses. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then you're going to draw some numbers at the bottom of each. You're going to start with zero. And then you're going to count up by multiples of eight. You can, by the way, use the text tool to type these if you prefer. I just like using the drawing tool. But text tool is fine too. So I'm going to count up. I just skipped one there. <laughs> let's let's undo that. Oops. And then 48 and then 56. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do like a squiggle or a cross out of one of the squares in the first thing here, the 56. And so each of these little segments represents a single problem. I'm going to do the, the actual work for the problem on my physical whiteboard. But as I do that and I go to answer the problems on screen, I'm going to check, make a little check mark as I answer each question. And once I've filled up one of these little crosses, that tells me, hey, go check the time. Do I have 56 minutes left or approximately? Am I within like a couple of minutes the 56 minutes? Great, I'm good. If I have a lot more time left, then I know I'm going too fast and I need to like take a deep breath and slow down and make sure that I'm writing down all my work and that sort of thing. And if I'm a lot lower than 56 minutes, then I know that I'm going too slowly. I'm gonna to need to bail on a couple of questions in the upcoming segments to get myself back on time. So I'm just continuing through the exam question by question as I go. If you discover as you're doing this that, oops, you like miscounted or you forgot to make a check mark when you should have made a check mark, you can glance in the upper right corner of the test screen to see which question number you're on right now. And then you can just count it out. Like if I'm like, oh, I'm on question nine, where does that show up? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's a lot that I forgot to check off. But now I'm caught back up and I know I've got two more to go before I'm supposed to be at 40 minutes. Uh, the advantage of this method, there's a little bit more to draw out than another method I'll show you in a sec, but the advantage of this method is that, again, it's telling me, hey, go, reminding me, like, hey, go look at the clock and make sure that you're actually on time or approximately on time, and that allows me to take action if I discover that I'm not on time. Um, if I'm not tracking to that level of specificity, it's easy to get into trouble on the exam. And then if you get into trouble on the exam, chances are your, your test is, you're not going to be happy with your score. So this kind of tracking method is good for that reason. Um, but let's say that I don't typically have too many timing problems on the quant section. It's not true. I totally do. But let's say that I don't. I might use something that's a little bit quicker and dirtier than this setup. So I could instead do something like this. Now, if I'm, again, if I'm using the four question cadence that we're using for the yellow pad, if you're also getting ready to take it in a testing center, I'll show you one first to use. But then if you're not using that four question cadence, we'll use a different one that's even quicker and dirtier. So Q stands for question number, T stands for time remaining. Um, and we're going to count up for question number by multiples of four, because we're doing questions in four block, four question blocks. So 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. And again, you can use the text tool for this. You don't need to use the drawing tool like I am. And 28 is going to be our last number. There's 31 questions in the quant section. And then we're going to go up this column. We're going to start with eight minutes left. And we're going to go up to uh, by multiples of eight. So 8, 16, 24, 32. That's really messy. Sorry. 40, 48 and 56. Now, eagle-eyed watchers will notice. We're changing a little bit. We're shifting something in the, the typical yellow pad thing here, which is that this would actually be question three in the yellow pad thing. We would do three questions and have 56 minutes left. Uh, and at, at the end, it, it would count up differently. It'd be like three, seven, 11, 15, but that's really annoying to try to memorize those numbers. So if you're going to use this quick and dirty method, just count up by multiples of four in this column. And then in this column, go up by multiples of eight. 
and it's close enough. This is actually a little bit less time exactly than you need for that, but it's okay, it's within reason, and you'll be caught back up within a couple of sections. If you're not already using the four question cadence, or if you would just prefer to use something else for the online exam, but it gives you something else to remember, we can also do this one this way, again, which is even quicker and dirtier. Similar question number of time. This time we're gonna do it in five question blocks. So we're gonna count up five, 10, that should be a, a 15, not a 25. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, and 30. And then what we're gonna do here is you just have to remember the first number is 52. This is basically 10 minutes less than the time limit for the section, which is 62 minutes. And then we're gonna just count down 52, 42, 32, all the way down. Until we're done, we should basically be at two minutes left at that point. Uh, you don't really technically even need to write down the 30 and the two at that point. It's really enough to just know at 25, question 25, that you should have around 12 minutes left. Um, the, this one, like I said, is easier and faster to put down and remember, but if you're already using a four question cadence, you might wanna use this one if you're gonna use this table method, um, just so that you don't have to think about the two different ways to do it, depending on whether you end up taking it in a testing center or online, or if you take it both ways. And the other thing I'll just mention here is again, this is quick and dirtier, yes, but it doesn't build in a reminder for you as easily to go and and check the timer because you're not checking off each question as you're doing it as you did for this method up here. So if you're like me and like most people and you're at all struggling with the timing on the quant section, then go ahead and take the time to do this, to set this up and use this. It's a little bit more time up front to set it up, but you can set this up in the instructions period before the exam starts. So it doesn't actually take any of your exam time to set it up. For the verbal section of the exam, I'm also going to use something that's based on the standard yellow pad method. So we have 36 questions to answer in the verbal section, and we're going to break those down into four groups of nine questions each. You'll see why later on we're doing it specifically in nine questions, four groups of nine. I'm going to grab either my drawing tool or the straight line tool, and I'm basically going to make some tic-tac-toe boards. I'm going to make them vertically. I'll show you one in a second. And I'm not going to get them all on the same screen. I'm actually going to give myself some extra space here. So I'm going to pan down a little bit to draw them all. Now, when I'm done with the last one, I should have no time left. Uh, when I'm done with the third to last one, I'm looking to have about 16 minutes left. And I'm looking for 32. In this one, I'll explain in a minute why I'm drawing an R. And finally, 48 for this one. Okay, so then I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to answer my first question. This white space that I've got over here, I can use to take notes if it's reading comprehension or critical reasoning. I don't usually take many notes on sentence correction, but I might jot down a word or two. You can use your physical whiteboard for this as well. I prefer typing, so I would type and just use this space here. And the other thing that I can do that's really interesting on verbal, certainly for sentence correction and critical reasoning, it's harder for reading comprehension because of the way the question is placed on the screen. But I can actually drag the whole whiteboard around and move it on screen. And so I'm going to drag it so that a lot of it is actually off the screen. But this part right here is right up adjacent to the answer choices, um, the ends of the answer choices, basically. And I'm going to use the online whiteboard to keep track of my answer eliminations or what I'm thinking about the answer choices as I go. So pretend like I've got answer A is here, B, C, D, E, all the way down the screen. Uh, and so as I'm doing this, I can do this right on the right board right next to each question. And I don't have to, A, I don't have to write down A, B, C, D, E on my physical whiteboard. And B, I don't have to keep looking up and down from screen down to the whiteboard. When I'm done, I can go ahead and check off that problem. And then I can grab my eraser and just swipe down and get rid of all of those markings. You can also, by the way, if you prefer, you can do this. And when you're done, you can just hit undo and get rid of the marks that you made. If you want to do the, the undo thing, you might even get clever and do your X's like this so that they're like a single mark so that you get rid of them with one click. Anyway, so you do this as you go, answer by answer. You check off each answer as you go. And once you're through nine questions, you're going to check and see, hey, am I on time? Am I around 48 minutes? Give or take a few minutes. Let's talk about this R. So let's say question four, I start a reading comp passage. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to cross off the R. Now, this is expected. This is what I'm looking for, is to start one reading comp 
passage per each grouping of nine questions. That's what we're going to see on average because we typically see four reading comp question or passages in the exam. So I do this one, I get my reading comp passage, I check it off, and that lets me know when I get to my 48, things happened as expected, I should be around 48 minutes. Let's say though that I don't actually, I get down here and my R isn't crossed off, I didn't actually start a reading comp passage in this group of nine. Well, then I should expect to have more than 48 minutes left because this means that I didn't get an RC passage here. It means later on I'm going to get two RC passages in one of my segments. So I need to save a little bit of extra time to, for when I get there. So I would be expecting this one to be more like 50 to 51 minutes instead of 48 minutes. Alternatively, let's say I get a reading comp passage right here at number four and let's say I get another one, you know, down here at this question too. I'm going to go down here and I'm going to mark off a second R my next R down here, and I'm going to put like a little mark here. I put a little down arrow, but you can make whatever symbol you want. And it's just a symbol to me to like, oh, you, you, you got ahead. There's like an extra RC passage in this group. So now I know when I get to the 48 right here, I'm not expecting it to be 48. I'm expecting it to be maybe 46 or 45 because I actually had to start two RC passages in this group. If I get the two up here and then I get zero down here, I'm already good, this is marked off and I would expect this to be 32. So basically it will carry down as I keep going as long as I'm just remembering to mark my passage and then go see am I where I'm expected to be, which is that the R with this group is crossed off, but not this one, in which case this time is fine. Or should I be saving a little bit of time for later because I don't have the R mark marked off? Or should I actually have a little bit less time than normally expected because I have an extra R marked off down below? So I'm going to do that for each of the four groupings of nine questions until I get to the end and hopefully I'll be on time and be done. Um, the one thing I'll mention too is that the answer elimination, you may not be able to place the online whiteboard in a way that both allows you to do the answer elimination and gives you enough white space to take notes just because of the way RC shows up on the screen. So for RC, you may just have to put this down below the question and you can still use, you can still do your answer elimination on screen if you want to or on your physical whiteboard if you want to. You just won't be able to place it literally right next to the answer choices necessarily the way that you can for sentence correction and critical reasoning. Last but not least, we have the integrated reasoning section. This one is the easiest one of all because we have fewer questions. Uh, for this one, I'm gonna do three crosses and my time is zero, 10, and 20. Now, we have to answer 12 questions in this section in 30 minutes. We generally recommend planning to bail quickly, like immediately, on two to three questions in the section. So my assumption is that I'm gonna bail on one question per group of four, and then I'm gonna spend the remaining 10 minutes answering the other three questions, so around three minutes a question. I'm checking them off as I go, as always. And here, whenever I, bail on one instead of giving it a check mark I give it an X and so I'm looking to have by the time I'm done with a grouping three check marks and one X. If what I expect happens then this should be 20 and it's fine. If on the other hand imagine that I get to the end here and I actually chose to bail on two of these questions instead of uh, just one I should have some extra time here that I'm going to then go spend because down below somewhere I'm not going to bail. Alternatively, let's say that I don't bail on any of these, I do all four of them, then I should expect this 20 to be a little bit lower, maybe 17 or 18 minutes, because I didn't bail on any of these, and I'm expecting to have an extra bail in one of these sections down below. And that's it. Now you know how to take the GMAT online, or use the whiteboard anyway to take the GMAT online. Um, as with anything on this test, you basically just want to plan before you get in there. You, you want to know what you're going to do in different circumstances. So play with the online whiteboard, with the physical whiteboard, figure out what works best for you for all of these things that you have to do during the exam, and you'll be good to go when you get to the real thing. You won't have to think about it. You'll just know what you want to do. So good luck and happy studying.